Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution for the problem named GCD queries taken from today's code forces round. This problem is an excellent problem which will teach you how to use casework in calculating a pairs of GCDs and finding a number which is zero by interacting with the computer. So in this problem we are basically given a secret permutation of size n which has elements from 0 to n minus 1. We have to find two indices x and y such that either px is 0 or py is 0 and we are allowed to ask at most 2n queries. This basically means that we want to reduce the set of possible indices which are 0 to only two elements x and y and once we have made the set of all possible indices to two indices then we can just print those two indices because we know that one of those two indices will be a zero and we are allowed to ask only two n queries to find these two indices so in each query we, we give i comma g and we'll receive gcd of the pi and pg elements obviously i cannot be equal to g otherwise if i was equal to g then in n, n queries we can basically say that pi is equal to gcd of pi comma pi for all i going from 1 to n and we can find out the entire permutation in n queries and we can just print which of these n elements is a zero so obviously this is not allowed we need to query for two distinct indices so for example let's say n is equal to 2 then it's obvious that when n is 2 we just print 1 comma 2 because we know that one of those two indices will be a zero. If n is three, we know that either one, two, or three will be zero. So over here, we get the first main observation, which will help us solve the problem. And basically, we just need to extend this observation for any n greater than or equal to three. So let's illustrate this observation for n is three. So when we consider n is three, let's calculate GCD of 1 comma 2 so this is when you query 1 comma 2 and gcd of 1 comma 3 so let, let's call this first thing g g1 or gi and let's call this thing gj where i is 1 and uh, g is 2 so so initially g1 is query 1 comma so let's say we query 1 comma 3 because uh, we we'll, we know we want to find all possible GCDs. So let's say we query 1 comma 3 and we query 2 comma 3. We can also query 3 comma 2 but it's not needed. Um, let's say we make these two queries. We can make at most 2 into 3 which is 6 queries but 2 queries are actually enough and I'll be explaining why. So in the first query let's say we take 1 comma 3 and in the second query let's say we take 2 comma 3 then the key observation is that if g1 is greater than g2 then 1 cannot the index 1 p of 1 cannot be equal to 0 this is the critical observation i mean a p of 2 cannot be equal to 0 And if g of 2 is greater than g of 1, then similarly, p of 1 cannot be equal to 0. So basically, the smaller GCD cannot be equal to 0 because the reason why this is true is if you assume p of 2 is equal to 0, then it's clear that the GCD of when you query 2 comma 3, you will get P of 3. And we know that the GCD will always be less than or equal to P of 3 because the important property of GCD is that the GCD of any two numbers is less than or equal to both of the numbers. So if you take any two number GCD of 4 comma 12, for example, is 4. GCD of 7 comma 10 is 1. So if you take any two numbers, you'll always find that the GCD is less than or equal to the two numbers. 
So that's why the GCD is always less than or equal to P3. And if we and we can eliminate the smaller one. So if G of 1 is greater than G of 2, then 2 cannot be 0. Similarly, if G of 2 is greater than G1, P, P of 1 cannot be 0. So we can eliminate. We basically eliminate the smaller GCD index. So eliminate the index which contains the smaller GCD. And if you eliminate the index which has a smaller GCD, we will be left with fewer indices. And we can basically, uh, we can iterate, we can keep increasing the current position. So, so I'll be explaining how we can extend this idea to, to all possible values of n. So it's clear that when g1 is greater than g2, we'll just print 1 comma 3, otherwise we'll print 2 comma 3. So this is, this is the solution for n is 3. And now I'll be explaining how we can extend this idea for any n. So you should pause the video now and try to absorb the way in which I handled n is 3 because this idea can be extended for any n using the same method of eliminating the smaller GCD. So to extend this idea for any n, we'll maintain two pointers, L and R, or we can call them I and G. And let's set I equal to one initially, J equal to two initially, because these are the starting values. And initially either one or two can contain uh, P of 1 can be 0 or P of 2 can be 0. We will then iterate for each x going from 3 to n and check if we'll find the two GCD values. So G of 1 will be query of i comma x. G of 2 will be query of j comma x. And we know that by the same logic for when n was 3, if g of 1 is greater than g of 2, then clearly 2 cannot be the 0 index because j, uh, j cannot be the 0 index because if j was the element with 0, then this gcd will be equal to p of x, but g of 1 is greater than p of x, so that's not possible. And because all the gcds are less than or equal to p of x, so that's why g of 1 cannot be greater than p of x which basically means that g2 cannot be p of x, which basically means that p of j cannot be 0. So we can eliminate j. So in this case, we eliminate j. And in this case, we eliminate i. And basically, I've just written exactly what I was what was written ab ab above, but I replaced i, I replaced 1 with i and j with 2. And I basically set up a loop from 3 to n. Now the main part for n greater than 3 will be figuring out what this eliminate method is or how exactly we should eliminate values. So the way in which we can eliminate values is to notice that we can simply set, we can simply replace j with x over here and we can simply replace i with x over here because we know that i no longer can contain a 0 but x may contain a 0. That's why we set i equal to x. We set the first pointer to be equal to x. And in this case, we set the second pointer to be equal to x. And in this way, we are eliminating g and we are adding the value of x to, to the possibilities. However, notice that if g of 1 was equal to g of 2, then x should be eliminated. So eliminate x if g of 1 is equal to g of 2. So in the first case, when g of 1 is greater than g of 2, we eliminate g by setting g equal to x. In this case, we eliminate i by setting i equal to x. And in the last case, we don't need to do anything because x is eliminated by default. We, we have not set either of the two positions to x. And the reason why x is eliminated by default when g of 1 is equal to g of 2 is because if 
g of r is equal to g of 2 this basically means that uh, we are if x was if p of x was 0 then we would get g of 1 is p of i g of 2 is p of j and and since it's a permutation we can't have equal elements so that means that x is not the zeroth index so x cannot contain the element 0 and that's the reasoning behind why when g of 1 is equal to g of 2 we ignore x and we move on keeping the same values of i and j so values of i and j remain the same and those two positions can still contain a zero and in the end we just print i comma j and you can verify that in this code like in an n is 3 if g of 1 is equal to g of 2 we ignore 3 because 3 cannot contain 0 and we will just print we will just print 1 comma 3 so over here we print 1 comma 3 so this is the third condition when the two g series are equal so now i'll show you the code which implements the same idea for any n so in the code for each test case i've taken the value of n the number of elements in the sequence i initialize i and j to be one and two so these are the two candidates for these are the two candidate positions where zero can occur and for each x going from three to n g1 is squaring i comma x g2 is squaring g comma x and i basically check if g1 is greater than g2 we eliminate eliminate j otherwise we eliminate i and in the last case when g1 is equal to g2 so g1 when g1 is equal to g2 we know that x cannot cannot contain 0 so p of x cannot be equal to 0 and that's why that's why x is eliminated by default or uh, i and j remain the same and in this way we can maintain which are the candidate positions for zeros and in the end we just print i comma j and you can verify that this code gets accepted so i hope you like this problem and my solution if you have any doubts in any part of the solution do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you